Hey Midway, it's Miss Martin, or you might remember me as Owen from our Reader's Theater today. I'm going to be reading chapter three, which is, if a rabbit refuses food, it can quickly become an emergency. At home, Dad set up a cage in the living room. Mom picked some, some parsley from our garden to add to the carrots, pellets, and Timothy hay that the store clerk had sold us. I got a plastic bin for the hay, and Owen found a water bowl. Welcome to the wildlife bed and breakfast, he told the bunny. This rabbit seems very comfortable with people, Mom remarked as she ran her hands over him looking for injuries. It was true. The rabbit hadn't squirmed when Dad checked to see if he was a boy or a girl. A boy. Or when I held him and Owen looked through his fur for ticks and fleas. He even stayed calm as Molly and Maggie gave him a quick sniff. But as soon as I put him in the cage, he crawled on his belly to the corner and then hunched his back like a furry bowling ball. I slid a piece of carrot closer. Give him some time, Dad said. He's been through a lot today. He'll probably eat if we leave him alone. What if he doesn't? I asked. Dad shrugged. You know how it is with animals, Em. Some things aren't ours to decide. We do our best, but the rest is up to him. The rabbit stayed hunched in the corner of the cage. Only his little nose moved, opening and closing with each breath. Emma, I'll, Emma and I'll take him to the animal shelter in Wrangley after school, Dad told Mom. Then he looked at me. But if he hasn't eaten anything by morning, I want to take him as soon as the shelter opens, okay? Rabbits can go downhill fast if they don't eat. I nodded. I bet he'd be happier in my room. The rabbit's ear closest to me slanted toward the sound of my voice. He's fine right where he is, Mom said firmly. You need a good night's sleep, Emma. Yeah, Owen said. You should get some sleep. I wrinkled my nose like he smelled bad. Owen never used to take Mom and Dad's side over mine. By bedtime, the rabbit still hadn't eaten anything. I pushed the carrot up to his front paw so he didn't even have to stretch to reach it. He turned his head away. My heart felt heavy as I went upstairs. The worries about school were boosted up with extra worries about the rabbit. He trusted me, and now he was alone in the cage. Scared was pulling ahead of excited now. In my room, I emptied my backpack so I could see all my new stuff and, and give excited some help. Everything was new. Planner, folders, notebooks, water bottle, cute erasers, pencils, colored and regular. Pencil sharpener, markers, highlighters, post-its in several colors. Tissues, lip gloss, ponytail holder to hold my hair to pull my hair back for gym and recess, and pear scented hand sanitizer. I had watched online videos of other kids getting ready for school and had bought everything they suggested. I really wish those kids were in my class because they all seemed friendly. None of them lived in Maine though, so I hoped what they had suggested worked here too. It had been fun to go back to school shopping for the first time. I'd always, I'd always had some new things to start each year, but I never spent so much time planning what I'd wear. While homeschooling, I'd just see what I felt like wearing that day, but now it seemed important to look interesting, but not too different. For tomorrow, I picked out jeans, orange sneakers, and a blue t-shirt with a golden retriever on it. I figured if a kid had said something about my shirt, I could start a conversation about Molly and Maggie instead of just saying thanks. I wished I could wear the leather boots I had bought, but the, the mornings were almost cold enough for frost, afternoons were still hot. In homeschool, I could have just changed with the weather, but now I had to pick something to last the whole day. It was exciting to have so many new things, but when I changed into my pajamas and shut off the light, scared was waiting for me. What if I didn't know something important? Or I did something embarrassing like forget to zip my backpack and everything spilled out on the bus. Or I accidentally squirted my new hand sanitizer all over my new jeans and reeked of pears for the, first, the rest of the first day. Pretty soon, I was worrying about everything. Outside, a fox barked in the woods. It always sounds like an angry scream. Maybe Monsieur Renard had discovered that Monsieur Lapine had escaped him yet again. I wish I knew if the rabbits had eaten. What if he was scared listening to the fox bark and thinking Bella I'd abandoned him? Please report to the, uh, I'm sorry, that he just loop, traded one right. way of being stuck Bella for another. Morgan to the car loop. Thank you. I couldn't bear the idea that I'd rescued him only to have him die alone and afraid in our living room. I grabbed my flashlight and tiptoed down the dark stairs so I wouldn't wake mom and dad. The rabbit looked weary as my flashlight beam touched him in the corner of the cage. The carrot was right where I'd left it at his feet. 
the rabbit kicked a little as I slid my hand under him and pulled him out of the cage, but he calmed down as I held him against my chest. He was small enough to hold with one arm, so I dropped the carrot, the parsley droopy now, and my flashlight into my bathroom pocket. I set the water bowl into his hay bin and carried everything upstairs. Maybe Dad was right that some things aren't ours to decide, but other things are. After I closed my bedroom door behind me, I set the rabbit on the braided rug in front of my dresser. I wish I could just let him hop around my room all night, but rabbits are chewers. So I dumped my clothes out of my pink plastic laundry basket and lined the bottom with a towel to make it comfy. Then I put the water bowl, food, and hay bin in the corners of the basket and pushed it up beside my bed. We'd done that when Molly and Maggie were tiny puppies so we could reach down and pat them if they whimpered at night. It seemed like the perfect plan, but when I turned around, the rug was empty. Two back feet and a puff tail were disappearing under my dresser. Uh-oh. I dropped to my knees. The rabbit was way underneath. I gave a tiny squeeze. Sorry, I said. Did you find some dust bunnies to play with? He wiggled out and I tried to catch him. Rabbit Wrangler to the rescue. He was as fast as a cartoon character, though. He'd hop in one direction and just as I'd reached for him, he'd suddenly twist his body almost in half and race the other way. It took three tries and a few scratches before I got my palm on his back. He flattened himself on the floor, and I wrapped my hands around his middle. Carrying him to the laundry basket, I kissed the top of his head. His ears were so warm. I wanted to cuddle him, but it was almost midnight now, and my alarm was set for six. Time for bed. In the laundry basket, he sniffed the plastic sides and pushed his nose into the vents. He dug into a corner and bunched up the towel. Then he rose on his hind legs and put his front paws on the top edge of the basket. He wasn't heavy enough to tip it over, but one foot... One back foot went into his water dish. I couldn't help giggling. Then he gave a big hop right out of the basket. Oh no, two long hops and he was under my nightstand. He started to chew the cord to my lamp. No, as I reached for him, he went under my bed. Then I had an idea. I took everything out of the laundry basket and sat on the edge of my bed, holding the basket upside down on my knees. I waited until the rabbit came out from under the bed. I pretended I wasn't paying attention to him, but the next time he hopped past, I dropped the laundry basket over him like a big pink plastic tent. He had plenty of air with all the vents, and he couldn't hop out. Lifting one edge of the basket, I slid the hay bin and water bowl underneath. I pushed the carrot and the droopy parsley through a vent. But as I climbed into bed, the laundry basket started moving across the floor. The rabbit was pushing it with his nose. His water would probably get spilled, but I smiled anyway as I turned off the light. I listened to the soft scrape of the laundry basket on the floor. Tomorrow, everything would change. A yellow bus would stop at the end of our driveway for me and dad, and I'd take the rabbit to the shelter after school. But this, for this warm, dark moment, none of that had happened yet. I heard a clomping sound, like two wood blocks softly hitting each other. I checked on my flashlight and saw some of the parsley wiggling from the rabbit's mouth. He was eating. I was so relieved that I laughed. I wondered if he'd still be under the laundry basket when I woke up. Maybe he'd figure out a way and I'd find him in my closet or under my bed or beneath my dresser playing with the dust bunnies. Or if he, if he really were Monsieur Lapine, he'd trick us all. He'd squeeze out from the laundry under the laundry basket and spring up and away through an open window with quite a story to tell the other animals. Silly Monsieur Lapine, they'd say, why are you always in trouble? But he'd grin, knowing he was the one with the full belly of parsley and carrots. Good night, Monsieur Lapine, I whispered, turning off my flashlight. Hope you enjoyed chapter three. See you next time.